Hello there and welcome back to the Agostino Zynga show with me, your host, Agostino Zynga. And this is episode number 497. That's 497 of the Agostino Zynga show. How you doing? How you feeling? My friends. Great. Amazing. How am I? doing the best I can as always with the time I have available. If it's your first time checking out the show via YouTube, you know what to do. Smash a like, hit subscribe, leave a comment down below. I'd love to know your thoughts, feelings, and suggestions regarding the show and what I have to talk about. And if you're listening via the podcast app, please leave me a five-star review or any star review. Only take you less than probably five minutes to do on your Apple podcast app. Obviously that helps me become more discoverable. It puts me up in the charts as people know that people are listening. All that good stuff will really help. So if you could do me a massive favor and just leave me a review you on there take five minutes out of your day i really appreciate it. i've already seen a couple on there already if you could just boost those numbers up of reviews pass it on to friends and family let them know get those reviews pouring in my friends i would really really appreciate it and of course support via patreon is also welcomed at patreon.com for just agostino i upload one bonus bit of content on there per week for my patreon subscribers only so if you want to get access to the patreon bonus episodes definitely check out patreon.com for slash a g o s t i n h o or alternatively click the link in the description and it gains you access to it but not until you subscribe for little as one dollar the equivalent of one pound it's nothing really one pound what is that that's less than a flipping kit kat join in there get involved and get that content Content. and we've got hot brand new content actually coming on the patreon again specifically for the top manor place that i'm going to over the weekend so if you want to see firsthand what that experience is going to be like then definitely tune in to the patreon i'm going to have field recordings i'm going to have pictures i'm going to have videos only exclusively available for my patreon support so make sure you jump on there get involved don't delay get involved well how have you been i've been great how have i been i've been awesome you know i've been doing actually lately it's a mad random thing, but I've been going on a bit of a deep dive, um, or not a deep dive. I've, I've got a kind of a guilty pleasure these days where I watch videos of low cows, right? And low cows are essentially, um, men and women who are derided, especially mostly men, and, mostly men and women streamers online who are derided by a huge amount of people because, you know, they do really stupid things and seem to continually mess up, but always seem to land on their feet. And I guess you know by nature we like to laugh at people when they fuck up so people get really um a lot of joy out of seeing these guys you know not you know su succeed but not really succeed if you get what i mean right because they're succeeding because they get to essentially live a pretty cushy lifestyle by just sitting at home and streaming all day but they're essentially a prisoner to their quote-unquote own success because they can't figure out a way to get out of it and, and there's no real option out there that exists because they spend the last what 10 plus years working from home streaming so they've got huge gaps in their bits of employment and generally they're not the most um well-adjusted people that you would want to have you know reintroduced back into the working space anyway in general so you know it's probably all the better in that regard and one of the two of the two pe two of the main people that i follow or that i check out bits of content from specifically detractor channels or channels that essentially are only existing to kind of make their life a living hell are wings of redemption and dark side field two dudes who kind of occupy other ends of the low cow spectrum but essentially two guys who a lot of people clearly on the internet don't like wings of redemption from what i can gather people don't like him mostly because he's a bit of a cunt right for somebody he's a yeah, he's a bit of a mino which is a which is weird because he's incredibly fat right he's super super fat like obese to the point where if he was maybe a few more pounds overweight he would be you know deemed what's that word called you know when you're like so big you have to have a disability badge on your car and stuff and you have to you get craned into your vehicle and all that stuff he'd be there but obviously maybe he's been blessed with good genetics and he's quite tall and the weight maybe spreads out quite evenly on his body i'm not too sure here's a video of him saying this his weight only lands in the middle of his stomach when you know whatever but for the most part he's a strange one because he's a really mean fat guy right who's incredibly toxic online but also is incredibly sensitive he gets really um disheveled or put out when people say mean things to him it clearly affects him but he's also very whiny right he likes to complain and moan about his situation but doesn't really do anything to change it and for the most part from what i can gather people hate him because of that they also hate him because he had this episode where he was trying to raise money to get like a gastric bypass so that he could you know i guess lose some weight and he decided to beg his 
viewers and his fans for those donations his fans and and viewers at that time thought that he was wanting to make a big change in his life i think he had a really emotional stream where he basically broke down and said i need this or i'm gonna die essentially he said something along the kind of lines right and um obviously people were kind and they decided hey if this guy really wants to change his life what's a couple of dollars um gonna do what's a couple of dollars you know it doesn't mean doesn't really hurt me to kind of help him out and raise this amount they raised it he ended up getting the surgery and I think Mexico or something like that, one of those countries. Um, it ended up being a success, but unfortunately he didn't follow through with the after plan. He then ended up still ballooning back up to the way he was previously. And a lot of people basically kind of hold it over his head because they feel as if like they were duped, as if they were scammed because they raised the money in the hopes that he would get the gastric bypass or that he would, you know, stop eating as much. But now essentially what he does is that he still eats the same amount, but he just spreads it out throughout the day because his stomach obviously has been shrunk to some extent. So he can't handle the same amount of food that he used to handle before. So now he just eats a lot, but just has to nibble, which is flipping insane to see a guy online. And again, that's the other thing about wings are super bizarre. He spends all his time at home sleeping. Doesn't really do much for the sounds of it. You know, he says he goes and does cars and oil changes stuff. But I think he says those kind of things as a way to kind of prove his manhood, as to prove he's still like, you know, um, a functioning adult in that regard and not somebody that just kind of is a bit of a shut in in the same way that um, Dark Side Phil is. But he spends his entire time at home, like doesn't do completely anything else. But then whenever he's on stream, he has, happens to be, when he's on stream, that's when he decides to be hungry. And that's when he decides to kind of eat into a microphone, which is one of the biggest pet fees I've always had with podcasts, right? People that eat and chew directly into a mic. It's just like, ugh, it makes, it makes my skin crawl, which is, again, another part of his low column. Then on the other side of things, you've got Dark Side Phil, right? Um, Phil Brunel, who is um, probably one of my most hated guys or somebody that I generally, like I see his face, it just makes me angry. His fucking whiny voice, it just pisses me off because I think he does everything that I think as a man you shouldn't do, right? Is that beg and plead for people to give you donations in order for you to kind of um, sustain your life, not work for your own kind of, you know, not basically not willing to put in a hard days on this graft in order for him to enjoy the things he wants to enjoy he just wants people to pay him money like he's so entitled things that i would never do right asking people for money doing all this sort of nonsense like promises been broken just an insane level but anyway that's what it feels another online streamer i don't think they're similar ages i think maybe does i feel might be a little bit older but essentially people hate him because he begs online all the time uh, because he basically feigns or the thing in the beginning he used to do it a lot where he used to kind of give the impression that his house was going to get repossessed or something along those kind of lines he had to move out he had to sell his house so now we have to raise this amount in order to save the house um he'd be moaning about not being able to buy games and this is also you have to imagine for dark side phil he was a streamer on twitch before from what i can rec understand when you're on twitch you get subs right and with subs on similar to like memberships on youtube with subs on twitch they pay like a monthly fee basically to be a subscriber on your channel which doesn't include what they give you in tips and bits and stuff it's just like a fee that they give and at one point Phil I think at his height had like 900 subs on Twitch right I think the last time I saw a clip or somewhere around I think he kind of hovered around 700 600 after that but still with about 900 if I'm not mistaken and with it being let's say let's say kind of reasonable figure it probably was more it probably was five dollars right but let's say he had 800 right let's go here let's see so he had 3.99 times 800 subs alone and he made like three thousand, right just on those subs alone not including the tips and i guess on tips he was asking for a hundred dollars a day <laughs> right a hundred dollars a day no a hundred dollars per stream sorry because he does two streams he does a stream in the morning a stream in the evening so yeah two hundred dollars per two streams that's two hundred dollars per day he streams six days per week he takes off one day so that's 200 times six, oh, sorry, 200 times six, that's 1,200 times that by four, roughly, that's 4,000 plus the three, two, five, whatever that was, that's nearly 10 grand, it was eight grand, right? Just say $8,000 or something along those kind of lines, he was making just on, you know, people, let's say tipping, well throughout the week and also the subs so you'd make let's say average you may be around at seven or eight whatever it may be and that still wasn't enough he'd still beg for more you still ask for this dark for that um somehow he managed to find a wife during that whole period and again that's the other thing too they're both married one guy is like 
insanely obese and incredibly you know hard to look at the other one is incredibly hard to look at it's like a melted candle and has this really annoying voice and still hadn't up someone to marry him it's just maybe further proof that you know <laughs> women's taste in men is just something that you can never really wrap your head around obviously in terms of security and safety and ability to raise a family or look after them in general it makes sense because they both are making well i guess at phil's height he was making 100 grand a year um you know wings in with these begging was maybe making 50 60 i'm not too sure but still you know high percentile in terms of where they're what their earning rates are but it's just what i was thinking here this is the point i've raised it i'm thinking as a woman right imagine again i'm not a woman clearly but i wonder who's the more who's somebody yeah what would you settle for more dark side feel or wings because deep down you have to know and realize that you know your dude is basically sitting at home all day whilst you're at work because again both of their both of these streamers i'm talking about both of his, both of their partners both of their wives still work i think both of their wives still work part-time or something i don't know why that is because you know you'd imagine with that amount of income nearly 10 grand per month even if you're living in a really expensive place, you could figure out a way, an option to retire your partner with some sort of plan in place, right? Whether or not they pick up the merch side, whether or not they do your bookings, there could be something that you could do where you could kind of figure out a way to kind of slowly but surely get to a point where you're both not working, you're able to support your the entire household off of the stream, which is an incredible privilege, but they both don't do it. So I was just thinking as a woman, what would you put up with more? Wings of Redemption or DSP? And I'm going to play two clips for you just to kind of give an illustration on who these guys are. And these clips are amazing. The first clip is Wings of Redemption and it's titled Wings of Redemption doesn't care about his sixth wife, gets trolled, grow up and deal with it. Essentially, this new arc that's appearing now is that allegedly um, Wings of Redemption's wife had some issues with thyroids or something to do with cancer prior. And she obviously um, was able to get over that and, and, and was able to come out of it the other side. But supposedly a lump or something has been spotted by a doctor recently. And she's obviously clearly worried, which she, you know, which is she should be right. Um, has every reason to be, especially when you consider what she's been through. And for whatever reason, it doesn't seem to elicit the reaction you would think it would react. It, it, it doesn't, yeah, it doesn't seem to elicit the reaction you'd think it would from the, her husband. Um, he doesn't seem to really care that much. He's kind of telling her to just relax, like she's just, you know, it's like an anxiety attack. It's okay, or you just panic attacking over, or you're panicking over and nothing. And this video kind of illustrates again like another it's kind of a good illustration representation of what he's like as a human being where he's more worried about streaming but then he's always crying and complaining about streaming because he feels like everyone's being mean to him but then his wife who's clearly in need and needs some some emotional support and maybe a you know just him as a gesture turning off the stream and just sitting down with her and kind of comforting her he decides to do this so just listen to this and then we'll go on to dsp danny bay talking about that fucking younger than 12 shit either again i don't advocate Underage sex. <laughs> well, I think the same stream. So get those people out of there. That 62 IQ thing might be true because I've never seen someone that gets baited so easily into saying some wild shit on your stream. Why would you even say that? Like, what does this even mean? Like, why why would somebody even think you did advocate for that sort of stuff? It just opens up so many unnecessary doors. No pun intended. Why do I watch so many troll videos on YouTube? I mean, generally, it's to show my wife what the trolls are saying. What do Kelly's farts smell like? Like everybody else's farts on the planet? What you mad at me for? Is the wife coming in into the room? What She's is this suggestion out of for a tele unlimited UAV? You what it is? I don't think you're taking my doctor's appointment seriously enough. Who the hell is we the Wendy's? What do you mean? I'm really scared about it. I don't even know what this muffler is. You haven't got bad news yet. There's no reason to worry about bad news. You, you worry about everything else. Exactly. He's he's responding to her as if she's like worried that a job a job interview that she went to that she really liked, she got good vibes from, hasn't rep sent her an update or let her know what her status is and where she's in the process or if she got it or not. That's how he's acting. 
as if like, oh, but they told me they were going to call me on Wednesday. It's now Friday. And it's like, yeah, you know, you know, don't worry about it. You know, don't worry. Maybe they've got stuff, you know, they're tied up with things and they'll call you later. Bloody blah, blah, blah. That's, you know, that's kind of the response that you'd expect from that. Not from somebody that's clearly worried again for a woman, especially um, who's clearly worried about something that they've suffered from previously. Um, you know, unsure just you know full of just different conflicting emotions comes back home from work sees you sitting in your sofa sitting you sitting in your chair streaming online talking to your friends online divulging things about me that i don't want you to divulge about my thoughts and shit all that sort of stuff and here you are saying it's okay don't worry it's nothing to pay me about what then grow up and deal with it grow up and deal with it you're gonna be okay we'll deal with it and turns away Back to stream. Tell her everything's gonna be okay. Like, yeah, she's stressed no, out no. about. She has to have a CT scan. And she's so stressed. What the fuck? What the fuck are these people saying about UAV's wife? There's somebody underneath you, skate. He's completely turned off anyway. He's completely switched off. He doesn't really necessarily care about his base. That's interesting, right? She's getting stressed out about a CT scan. Of course, wouldn't any woman get stressed out by a CT scan? Wouldn't any guy get stressed out by a CT scan? Especially if you go for a minor checkup and you get told that you have some lump after you just recovered from cancer previously. Of course, you're going to be nervous and you want some emotional support, especially from your spouse. But, you know, again, so who's your candidate? Wings of Redemption as a great husband to be or will it be? DSP and this is a video courtesy of Memology who used to make some great DSP co uh, detractor content it's a shame he kind of moved on to pastures new but it is what it is and this is it about DSP's gross e-begging hits a new low and this is kind of a, a, a kind of a snapshot into how Darkside Phil earns his living online right um, it's gross it's disgusting it's kind of lacking in dignity um, in all sorts it kind of goes against everything I stand for as a guy and it makes me incredibly angry but it's also ridiculously funny that he has ink fans that legitimately think that he needs more than 10 grand per month in order just to survive and scrape by it's just wild but yeah let's just watch this video quickly let's put it up to the start and then I'll show you what I mean on the screen it says weeks ago dogs I feel created the vest streak A gimmick where he would put on a stupid vest each time the tips or goal was reached. <clears throat> wow. Look how happy he is. People are tipping money to wear a tip to wear a vest. Tips. And ladies and gentlemen, I promised it, I said if we hit the tips goal, I would put the vest on. This is the quick And you have to also remember during this vest goal time, this is when this is the the, the thing the thing that I never understand about Dark Side Phil. He's always got money issues. It's never enough, the money that he gets given. But during the Twitch times, he was still begging for tips, even though he was getting a base, which we, which we kind of caricated over there. He was getting a base income of at least anywhere between three to $5,000 or $6,000 per month. Let's say three to six. He was getting a base of. And anything else on top was a bonus. But he was acting as if that base wasn't enough and the bonus was necessary. And you know why he said the bonus was necessary? Because those tips that he got were stuff that he could use immediately to bills, right? But it's stuff that he could basically um, take right now to use. Whereas the the base level pay he was getting from Twitch was something that happened every the end of the month or the middle of the month, but it was a particular day. Whereas with the tips, he could extract them every single day. So he made it seem as if he was in dire straits when he clearly wasn't. And then now Switch on when he got eventually kicked off of Twitch, rightfully, he's now on YouTube and he's doing the exact same thing. But now he's good, definitely admitting that he was making far more money on Twitch, but then he's acting as if he never used to beg on there also. It's just a horrible existence. And this whole gimmick with the vest was just a crazy time to be alive. The biggest I've ever put the vest on in the past few weeks since I've been doing this. I gotta get the vest. Hold on. Vest pick? What are you talking about? Vest emote? Vest pick? Move the mic. There. Okay. We'll do this, okay? And then also, we'll do that. That way, if you don't want it with. There's oh, no hair there. You're balding. There, because people want to make a vest emote. 
What an oddly there built man, isn't it? He's got like the most chicken arms you're right, I've ever seen. I'm stressed. I'm sitting, here, I'm sitting in the office that's about 85 to 90 degrees with a vest on. I'm sweating profusely as I'm trying to play a game. First of all, I have to move. But second of all, it's vest time. Let me get it. All right. This is him playing a game and getting, fetching his vest oh. now as he gets killed on whatever Call of Duty. I want to get the vest and I get killed, of course. I'm ready to game, bro. Who's ready? Come anyway, that, that gives you an example of it. But I'm just wondering, for the women out there, who would you choose for a mate? Dark side Phil, right? This guy who's ready to game, bro, with this stupid vest gimmick who goes online and begs for tips from people every single day, right? Or the eternal fat man in in Wings of Redemption who, you know, despite feeling as if streaming his, you know, disastrous, he's having disastrous consequences on his mental health and is driving him to the point of depression, still refuses to quit and just get a normal job and do away with the internet. Who is the best partner? I'd love to know in the comments down below. Let me know what you think. Moving on from that, we have some really great news for me personally because I'm a huge fan of his and somebody that I followed for the past, I don't know, for the most for most of my life, ever since I got interested in clothes. It appears as if Nigo has been named newly as Kenzo's first Japanese artistic director since 1999. This is courtesy of New York Times. The headline is incredibly offensive, I think, and really disrespectful because it, the headline says a hype beast comes to the luxury house. Sorry, a hype beast comes to the luxury house. Um, I don't think you could describe Nigo as a hype beast. He might be responsible for creating hype beast culture. Um, he might have played a part in creating it, but this idea that Nigo is anything associated with a hype beast is absolutely ridiculous. And if anything, it's really disrespectful considering the work that he's done, considering how influential he is, considering um, how many people he has mentored from afar, from up close. Um, and just considering the amount of absolute amazing product that he's been able to consistently put out regardless of what project he's working under and um, Bathing Ape never really survived after he left it's kind of on his knees doing stupid Puma collabs and other sort of garbage that they're doing at now at the moment and everything that Nigo has done henceforth has been absolutely amazing and i really cannot wait for what he has to present when he is at kenzo but i think the headline is absolutely disgusting personally um again hype is thing is interesting because when i was growing up hype was also always a derogatory term maybe nowadays the kids have kind of embraced the term hype beast in the same way they embrace clout chaser in the same way they embrace clout tokens in the same way they embrace being cringe right these kids nowadays do that kind of thing to be um somewhat ironic um or to somewhat be a little bit more interesting and add a little bit of flavor and layers to the whatever personality they're lacking i can understand that but when i was growing up high beast was always a derogatory term which is why when i first started again which is an, a little segue but when i was um 18 or whatever i think around that age i'm not too sure um I was one of the first writers on Hypebeast when it first launched. I think I might have been around when it was actually on a blog spot. And then obviously it got its domain name. And at the time, a lot of people on the forums weren't really happy about the name Hypebeast because they felt as if like, again, it was a derogatory term. And I think it might have even had a hyphen in between. I'm not too sure. A space between Hype and Beast. I'm not too sure. Somewhere around that kind of time. But I was one of the first writers on there before it kind of become obviously what it is now is a complete behemoth. And I remember back in the day, you know, me and, well, I used to, you know, talk to Kevin Mar quite a lot lot he used to be sending me flipping paychecks you know little paychecks of 50 dollars or whatever stupid amount it was through paypal for some article that i wrote about some hundreds tea or something right it was a great time to be alive but i remember back then i couldn't step into i couldn't step into doors of some places and i had a business card that had hype beast on it and stuff with my name and shit that card actually was a reason to kind of send me away because people didn't like the term they didn't like what the site represented you know um conspicuous consumption materialism queuing up Aside, queuing outside of stores and whatnot and sometimes upside the stores right people didn't like it so it was really interesting now to see what's kind of transpired nowadays where a platform or a publication like new york times is using hype beast maybe as a celebratory term but more so as a derogatory kind of poo poo because obviously he comes from more of a streetwear background than a fashion background with a capital f it's just funny to see that term being thrown out there but again and the title thing i think it's really disrespectful i don't think it should be there i think it should be a streetwear legend or whatever it may be called 
or a street where God or you know whatever it may be somewhere along that kind of lines will basically describe him a bit more but you know these places need to get their clicks in it so this is a picture here of Nigo at human I guess one of his human made stores um doing the he's he's probably got what some of the best I think Nigo and maybe Hiroshi Fujiwara have one of some of the best arsenal of pictures of them standing inside of stores amazingly lit interior design impeccable stores merchandise to the teeth like look at look at that rack behind him with the exception of a couple of teeth at the back look how evenly spaced everything is meticulous that's that whole japanese otako kind of obsessive compulsive attention to detail shit yeah yeah he's fiddling he's around there he knows every look and cranny of that store he knows where things are he can tell you what's in the stock room what is in the stock room that is what it is all about look how evenly spaced those coat hangers are at the back absolutely nutty but anyway this article from the new york times detailing what's occurred it says for the first time since designer kenzo cut Takada, sorry, resigned from his namesake label in 1999. A Japanese designer will once again run the Paris based brand known for its multicultural ethos and energy. Nigo, one of the first streetwear superstars and in demand collaborator with multiple brands, great and good, was named artistic director of the house on Wednesday by LVMH Moet, Hennessy, Louis Vuitton, Kendall's parent co company, which makes sense, right? Considering the other, okay, the other hires they've done under the LVMH banner, it makes complete sense that they will try and get somebody who already has a following who already has um a legacy who already has a name who already has quote-unquote clout that they could then plug into kenzo in the hope that they could revive it um of course using some of their codes but mostly just taking whatever juice that they have on their brand and installing it under the kenzo umbrella and then hopefully using it as a jumping off point to then doing other projects and maybe down the line change direction but they clearly want to change the kind of maybe customers they attract into the store the way the store is presented the stuff they do who they're aligned with because this is a full you know head to toe redesign you think of what nigo was doing at babe during his heyday from the cafe Phase, to the people that were in the look books to the books that they did to the toys to the kids stuff like it was a complete head to toe it was a complete world you know people say oh we could create a world in fashion all this kind of stuff nonsense and it's just a t-shirt no he was creating his own world that existed only where he was where the stores were everything how it was merchandised how the interior design was done it was just out of this world so you can imagine kenzo are really in this for the long game because when you hire someone like an eagle you're not hiring him just so you could redesign a couple of jackets and hoodies you're redesigning you're hiring him so that he can basically you know essentially change the entire universe around kenzo in the hopes that to attract new audiences and to just make it somewhat was it self-sufficient but to kind of rewrite whatever stuff they have out there at the moment it continues the announcement the announcement sorry the announcement followed the june departure of felipe Oliveira baptista after just two years at the brand of sisk home which is disappointing because i thought that last collection i thought it was loads of like ski wear kind of japanese inspired ski wear stuff that looked pretty sick to be fair some of the pictures of the of the runway show where people flipping and and doing kind of car wars and shit was mad especially with all the garments you know twirling around them so it's sad that that didn't obviously become successful and again that was something that i'd imagine a lot of the show studio people were sort of like happy about like artistically and the in you know inspirations behind it and the references and whatnot but commercially didn't sell so this is this again is another wake-up call for the fashion industry or people in general especially some of the more snobbier types who are always rabbiting on about people going to fashion school and doing conventional education and not having the knowledge and all this nonsense and who copies or who copies this at the end of the day what we've seen nowadays is that the, everyone's a consciousness especially when it comes to clothing and whatnot has been sort of awakened right everyone especially when i said before like sneakers is a multi-billion dollar industry there's no such thing as a subculture anymore they don't exist everybody and everything knows every, everybody knows everything to a certain extent so if that's the case the customers have now become the boss right the customers now dictate who and what sinks and who and what survives right who wants six and who what survives and they also are the ones who are going to vote with their feet and vote with their wallets when it comes to backing a certain brand so the certain brands are selling are selling because of the community the brand has been able to create or the brand owner and if you want to survive you're going to have to replicate or basically build that yourself right that's what you're going to have to do or, or just jack the person and basically install them into your brand but this is the way forward that most people are going to start going so don't be surprised to see a few more people like maybe a juna ambush i'm not too sure what she's doing at the moment but there's a few other people dotted around even no babazian i could definitely see him maybe getting 
you know um, hit up by some brand in order to kind of bring his Noah fan base into whatever fashion house that is that he would get offered from I can definitely see that happening going forward a lot more it says here it was part of a spree of activity at VMH which named a uh, new designer at Pucci this month and recently became minority investor in Celine um, designer Phoebe Fowler's not going to solo brands a lot going on at VMH isn't it there's an epic picture here of Pharrell and Nigo back in the day Pharrell wearing of course the iced out G-Shock not looking that much younger than what he looks like today um nigo who's um who like kenzo uses one name is just best known for his brand the bathing ape he opened his um first t-shirt shop in japan 1993 nowhere you know the deal and his kind of and helped vo vault him to streetwear fame before the lines appeared outside supreme new york they formed in tokyo outside of bape of course what well, mainly called nowhere that he kind of co-owned with hiroshi but we continue in a news release nigo pointed out that not only did he had entered fashion the same year of yamesh acquired kenzo but he was born in 1970. He said the year that Takada Kenzo-san opened his first store in Paris, we both graduated from the same fashion school. Yeah, that's what I was remembering. I think they did, if I'm not mistaken, Hiroshi and Nigo both graduated from the same fashion school, which is why I think some people used to refer, used to say they look similar, which is why I think Nigo, was it? Was it Nigo? Nigo? I forgot that the, the, there's a reason why. Anyway, this is some law that I forgot. But I remember I used to be flipping balls deep in this shit. It continues to say, and like Nigo, so like Kenzo, Nigo added that he was a, his view of creativity is rooted in understanding the many different cultures taking over the brand, he said, will be the greatest challenge of my 30 year career for sure. But I think he's he's up for it. I think Kenzo is on his knees. It needs to be revived. Um, his voice and his aesthetic and his codes and his approach and his sensibilities and creativity is, is completely different to anybody else they've had there as creative director prior. So there's no danger of him regurgitating or putting out the same things that they did previously. And he's also bringing with him a family base that's just rabid like i'm a huge hiroshi fujiwara and nigo fanboy like i'm gonna follow them wherever they go so if people like myself are willing to do that just imagine what the kids are willing to do and everybody else that has disposable income he's gonna bring a whole heap of new customers to that brand it's gonna be fucking awesome it continues it says nigo started a small brand called human made in 2010 and in 2011 sold 90 percent of his babe shares into hong kong um the fashion conglomerate it which i'm sure is the same conglomerate that also owns hypebeast the place i used to work at which is weird isn't it right strange leaving the brand officially in 2013 later joined unicorn's creative director ud collection bape hasn't survived since then i think they had a couple collections after he left that were really good which you could tell maybe he designed them ahead of time or the original from what i heard from the grapevine the original team that he was with at bape towards the end started leaving anyway and then when he left most of them ducked out a few years later so whatever team they've got designing now are just you know whoever you know what i mean just some randoms which is why the clothes look so disjoint like some collections look good others look crap as soon as they do collaborations they look stinky like i still remember seeing flipping aj tracy walking down the street in that bait puma jacket and nearly like wanting to punch a wall it was so offensively ugly but he continues said um his long time practice and partnerships and capsule collaborations funding building a boys club and ice cream with um with Ferrer williams sorry collaborated with ideas coca cola mac cosmetic kanye and cause and gradually brought him into the fold of avid collaborator virgil abloh indeed miss abloh told vogue um nigo was among the real mentors i had in fashion little wonder that in late 2018 19 sorry mr abloh settled into the royal secretary director um for menswear Louis Vuitton he chose Nigo as his first official collaborator which is an amazing kind of reach back again that's something people don't give Virgil credit enough for the fact that when or with his platform he has put on so many well not say put on but he has provided he has kind of shone a light on other people more so than I've ever seen anybody else especially in his infancy right you'd imagine when you're first getting your feet on the table at a big house you want to just you know you know have your voice and do your own thing maybe for a couple of seasons maybe five years or whatnot and then get collaborators in but he went straight in preaching back working with people giving them little capsule collections giving them little thing whatever it may be called and i think the collaboration with who knows how this played into it this could have played a big role into nigo getting a role at kenzo right the fact that he was able to kind of illustrate and show that he could work under that system i don't think that's true because most likely when it comes to these deals there's stuff that's been talked about for a long time so i'm sure this kenzo deal was something that was even superseded his um collaboration with um virgil but i like to imagine that story is true and it just for the just for the narrative of it it says here yeah, that was when kenzo was being designed from bits of baptiste who emphasized sustainable fabrics and subdued aesthetic uh his predecessor carolyn lim and humberto lino 
winner um, the taste making finals of a opening ceremony who ran cans of a 2011 2019 had bought the contemporary pricing and more streetwear to the vibe were they responsible for that flipping horrible tiger jumper Carolyn Lim and um, Humberto Leon, the founders of Flipping uh, Open Ceremony. I don't think that's around anymore, is it? I'm not too sure. But that's a long run they had, right? 2011, 2019, they had Kenzo in a chokehold. Hopefully, Nigo can, you know, do away with that fucking jumper. He says he announced Sydney Tololendo, um, LVMH Fashion Group Chairman and Chief Executive Officer, said in a statement, the arrival of an extremely talented Japanese designer will allow us to write a new page in the history of Takada's Kenzo. Takada Kenzo founded Nigo to start Kenzo on Monday, one week before fashion prior fashion week begins absolutely incredible i cannot wait to see what he puts out on the runway i think it's going to be a success regardless the headline from vogue from sorry from new york times is absolute bullshit but nigo's a legend and to illustrate you how much of a legend he is to me i've got tons of these flipping japanese magazines one of them being asayan but i've got many many others i've got flipping magazines like huge and stuff that i used to buy off of like um japanese auction sites like yahoo auctions and stuff and get them proxied over and sent and paying ungodly amount of customs for you know parcels that are weighing you know crazy amounts and from this magazine i think this might be from this is from february 2002 issue of asayan and it says here i think number 892 actually here it's issue there's actually a spread here from a bathing ape spring summer 22 to 2002 which i think deeply illustrates my aesthetic when it comes to streetwear and what i would actually end up designing if i ever put out a brand myself like you just can't go wrong with this kind of quintessential amazing um period of streetwear i think it was easily one of the best right just simple everything was a hoodie a t-shirt a pair of jeans and some trainers a nice down jacket just crazy simple stuff but look at this this is like baby 20 2002 the heyday right some of the best stuff you've ever seen like amazing you got nigo there modeling a great little down jacket too right just crazy crazy good stuff like amazing get another thing here hopefully you can see on the screen you've got a great assortment of jackets here on the left hand side also that i'm showing for the camera awesome got, oops sorry about that you got another set there right just crazy crazy good stuff like he's legitimately one of the best one of the greatest of all times people that probably don't put him a lot more respect on his name than needed but hopefully with this platform at kenzo people will be reminded of just how talented of a designer he is from everything again from store design to merchandising to packaging right the little plastic bags like all the stuff that he does the attention to detail even just the label i think if i'm not mistaken who invented that i think they're gonna say hirochi i think hirochi said he invented that label that they put on the outside on the on the sleeve that he that placement and then obviously nigo kind of co-opted that and put his on the no i think hiroshi put his on the bottom of the hem and then if i'm not mistaken nigo put his on the sleeve the little um logo the the little label with the sometimes it had the bait man head backwards or it had it it had it backwards or it had it the other way around or had it upside down depending on what design you got but all those little touches the stuff that you know you don't take it for granted even some of the them some of the bape stores i remember the one here in london it had some of the t-shirts were basically in these massive glaze glass panels that you had to kind of slide back and forth some of the limited edition ones like just crazy cool marks crazy cool merchandising that was almost kind of um it felt like you were walking into an art gallery but you could purchase the stuff right under a hundred dollars or two hundred dollars and stuff it's just crazy good man but look at all this stuff look at all this stuff all this stuff it's just amazing man this is this is the stuff that i live for like this great amazing design and again now that he's got the option this is again young nigo here look at him with his fucking bowl cut and his massive glasses like just you know that is the goat he is the goat so i can't wait to see what he does at kenzo congrats to him well deserved well deserved next on list what else do we have to talk about here yeah let's talk about this um there was obviously there was it was a was it the 20th anniversary of 9 11 happened um recently obviously a few days ago and it was just interesting to see the amount of just interesting to see how disgusting people are how disgustingly self-absorbed and um uh lacking in self-awareness narcissistic um people are nowadays just in general 
and I think it's funny to look at it that way, especially in contrast to this picture that was kind of doing the rounds on social that people are getting really upset about, right? It's this picture of um, Jason Deal when he's far younger, um, so standing somewhere in New York with the backdrop. You can see that the Twin Towers are on fire, right? I guess the second plane or the first plane already hit the first building. If I'm not mistaken, the thinking behind this was that no one knew what was actually going on on the ground level. Again, this was what? early 2000s so there wasn't many um i guess people didn't have smartphones or whatnot to figure out what was actually happening um you had to kind of find out on the news to see it eric i remember kind of walking into my house and seeing a plane going into a building and still thinking it was a movie or something i couldn't really wrap my head around it so no one really had an idea what was going on on the ground level so he was just taking a picture because you know he had no idea what was going on is it on fire is it blown up like who knows no one knew anything um and he took this picture, of course, at the time. And now, you know, many years later, people see this picture and they think it's distasteful. They think it's insensitive. They think he's, you know, um, you know, again, maybe uh, trying to insert himself into a situation. All these kind of nonsense things. When again, at the time, it was just a picture. You know, no one knew what was going on until obviously later on down the line. And then it becomes this really um, poignant kind of piece of history that you can kind of look back on and think, wow, man, just crazy, isn't it? What occurs? But it's also interesting nowadays, fast forward to now, people are sharing really weird stories about themselves being nowhere near the Twin Towers, but making it seem like they were. People are inserting themselves into the situation, kind of wanting to, for kind of, kind of fishing for sympathy points online from strangers. And it just goes to show that as much as people might think this picture of Jason Deal is distasteful, you can bet your bottom dollar if something like this happened nowadays, there'll be people legitimately live streaming with the flipping ring light outside or what's going on, you know, as a building next to them, a monument or something crumbles, there's some fire and stuff and people are screaming for their lives and jumping out windows. People will legitimately be streaming it live. People would be streaming and zooming into people falling out windows and stuff just so they could be the first person to get up online and get all the likes and the follows and just get any attention. Even if it's negative, they will be doing it. So it's just ironic to see people judging this picture that was taken in the past when people weren't as clout angry as they were now but then it's also interesting to see those very same people inserting themselves into something that they had nothing to do with right they're going fucking steve renazizi on this show right? saying that they were in the tower or they knew someone at work they know you didn't you did, was nowhere near there it's like that famous um story that brian Callen talks about how he used to get a coffee next to the twin towers if you know he didn't it was nowhere near the twin towers it was like a mile away but he kept saying it was near because he used to pass it when he used to finish getting his coffee but you know it's just it, it's just an interesting space space to be in again i repeat to everybody that obviously passed um there's still many many victims who have kind of have never really fully recovered you sometimes watch that i think was it um jace uh, what's his name jonathan stewart is it jonathan stewart whatever that guy's name is from the is it a daily show right um he said he kind of took it upon himself to, to fight for um the i think money for some of the first responders and police that have obviously been you know largely affected by the twin towers and the tragedy that happened there and yeah, people are doing some good work, but I just, I don't know. I just saw this picture and I saw how people were reacting online. It just made me think that if it happened nowadays, people would be awful. They'd be just as, they'd be just as bad as this is tasteful in terms of how they would kind of respond to it, I think anyway. But hey, what do I know? Next on the list, we have this crazy story, courtesy of The Guardian. It says, Judge Michigan couple, no, Judge Michigan couple must pay son 30,441 pounds dollars sorry for throwing out porn collection this is insane and just kind of illustrates um the freakiness levels that people have and also is so detached from my reality because i could never understand liking porn this much don't get me wrong it's enjoyable to watch from time to time as most things are but i can't imagine being this addicted to porn that i'd want to take my parents to court because they threw away my collection of videotapes and dvds and whatnot i understand that you know i can understand that if you have content yeah because the thing i'd imagine most people that have porn content especially content you know hard you know you know uh what do you think um like a you know like a tape or a dvd usually those pieces of things that you have aren't really easy to find on the internet whatever porn we have now on the internet is completely different to whatever porn those guys have right so maybe in their heads they're like if you throw this stuff out i'm never gonna be able to find this again right um it's stuff that was out of print it's not going to get done again some of the people that are in it have passed away do you know what i mean that's, that's he's kind of holding on to the he's kind of holding on to the jack-off session in that regard so i can understand the anger around it but taking your parents to court 
court. Now, this is some pure white people shit. Imagine to try and do this to an African parent, Caribbean parent, Asian parent, Indian parent, or whoever that Pacific parent is, right? Like South Asian parent. Like imagine trying to do this. So South, yeah, imagine, just imagine. To the following, a judge in Michigan has ordered a couple to pay $30,000 to their son for throwing out his pornography collection. A U.S. District Judge Paul Maloney decision this week came eight months after David Working, 43, won a lawsuit against his parents. A 43-year-old, in their, oh Jesus Christ, Working said that he had no right, they had no right to throw out his collection of films, magazines and other items, which he said was worth, 20, imagine even knowing the value of your flipping porn collection. Who's appraising it? Did he, does that mean he purchased legitimately everything in the shop or online he didn't buy one thing from a from a guy in the car park or a shopping mall somewhere that is insane like that that, that shows you a level of por porn of them or porn addiction really um in his ruling this week the judge followed a value set by the expert mlive.com um working with parents also have ordered to pay for um fourteen thousand dollars to their son's attorney holy shiz um working live with his parents again this is this way it gets worse this guy lived with his parents gr um lived with his parents grand haven home sorry lived at his parents grand haven home for 10 months after a divorce before moving to Mun uh to munis indiana after moving he learned that his boxes of film and magazines were missing so he gets divorced which happens in life lives with his parents for free 10 months mooches off of them even if he's paying rent he's still mooching off of them eating their food using their electricity using their water and then they decide when he leaves because obviously his room is full of shit and they want to reclaim the space because I'm assuming if you're a parent at that kind of time and your kid is 43, you just want them out. Do you know what I mean? So you can reclaim your house. It's not the same when they're a child anymore. You love to, you love them, but you don't want to have them flipping hold up in your room and taking up space in your house and shit. So they go into his room. They, you know, check off some, check away some, some hoodies, maybe a couple of socks out crunchy, you know, the vibes. And then they open the cupboard and they find boxes and boxes of flipping porn from you know everywhere in the world right all sorts of flipping action in there and they're like you know we don't fucking want this so they throw it out thinking yeah what am i gonna do tell my son that i found your punk i'm throwing it out that's embarrassing you're just gonna throw it out and hope you know he doesn't really mention it you don't mention it and you just move on obviously he mentions it he mentions it so much he flipping decides to take them to court wild guy Working's father wrote an email, frankly, David, I did you a big favor getting rid of all this stuff. <laughs> in his ruling in December, Judge Maloney said there is no question that he destroyed property was David's property. Defenders repeatedly admitted that they destroyed the property. Working's parents said that they had a right to act on his son's, his son's landlord. Maloney responded saying the defenders do not cite any statute or cash to support their assertions. They had landlords can destroy property that they dislike. Fair enough, though, I guess so. But still, I guess because it's his property and they admitted it, it is what it is. But what happens to their relationship? What happens to their bond that their son took them to court because of a porn addiction? Essentially, he chose porn over his own parents. That is wild. And that, again, shows... I love seeing these kind of things because they're so kind of foreign to how I live and operate in the world that I just can't wrap my head around being addicted to anything that much that I want to take my parents to court. Like, I can't think about it. It just doesn't make any sense to me. But, you know, he's, he was gripped. He was attached to it. Like I said, a lot of the stuff was probably rare. A lot of the stuff you can't get hold of anymore. A lot of the stuff is out of print. It's out of circulation. The okay, person I'm not really sure what happened there. For whatever reason, I was recording and the my whole setup stopped working the camera went off my little audio interface stopped working so i had to restart my macbook and here i am back again obviously if you're watching or listening you won't notice anything and it'll be all nice and smooth for you but this is a slight sign that i might need to upgrade and change the things in my macbook or do what i intend to do which i have a uh 2010 i think macbook pro that i need to upgrade get an ssd drive into it um buy a new charger for it and then i can probably put this macbook air that i'm using at the moment to rest or give it a bit of a break because it feels like i'm pushing this thing too far i've got record box on it i've got obs um you know i watch a ton of shit on it i'm obviously browsing all the time i'm writing i'm editing pictures on photoshop it's just too much i'm pushing it too much to just brink but i can obviously do that sort of stuff on the macbook air it's pretty much bulletproof the only reason why it died is because it's got like one of those old flipping hard drive things in that i didn't really installed in there properly and then end up getting corrupted but if i install the ssd drive in there which i've seen is pretty easy to do online i should be fairly okay but i think i ended on white mountaineering and uniqlo i think i touched upon the reason why i'm actually 
excited for it pretty straightforward hopefully you saw that bit and we're gonna just keep moving on because that's the best thing we could do at this moment we keep moving not much more to get let's just cover the rest of it before we crack on so um the met gala happened the other day the Met Gala, the uh, the um, ridiculous on uh, the, the the ridiculous displays of wealth and privilege from the cultural elites, um, the one percenters of the one percenters who kind of go around and basically you know lie to themselves that they're being somewhat charitable um, by going to this thing, and then us mere mortals are left at home to sh scratch and judge their outfits and judge and scratch did we do right we definitely did do that from afar and some of the outfits were good some of the outfits were bad um for the most part there was a lot of bad outfits i think the theme overall for this year's met gala there's always a theme that you have to kind of dress around and that also in that also involves exactly what they show in the in the in the gallery itself that's tied into it was american fashion american fashion american fashion um it seemed like the easiest kind of theme to kind of go off the back of it's you know something that even if you weren't the biggest fashion person with a capital f you can maybe work out an outfit that would make sense especially when it comes with the heritage or especially when you think about the heritage of america when it comes to fashion you think of the many different brands the movements um the things that have happened over history that you could basically um pull from and use as a muse use as a bit of inspiration in order for you to go out there on the quote-unquote red carpet and do your thing but people just missed for whatever reason i don't know why we didn't see just somebody in like a classic you know really well designed almost couture level which what um them did at balenciaga denim suit with a white t-shirt and a pair of timberlands or some boots or something that didn't that wasn't on there um i didn't see anybody maybe take some sort of colleague collegiate collegiate right in terms of sports kind of way in terms of interpreting american fashion there were so many ways to uh, interpret american fashion i'm gonna say fashion fashion all the time that it was really odd to see so many people miss the mark but i guess this is what makes this sort of stuff quite funny and also it kind of goes back to my other point i mentioned before sometimes when you have too much money and too much access you definitely end up missing the mark more than you do hitting the mark which is why people i guess this is why people kind of get into like a wanking frenzy when it comes to Rihanna because she seems like to she seems like one of the very few celebrities of that level who's able to kind of use her money and resources um, and actually use it to good by actually dressing amazingly well whereas most of her contemporaries are just basically you know it's, it's a flip of a coin whether or not they're gonna have a good outfit on so we start off of course this is courtesy of um, the cut it's got every Met Gala look on the red carpet allegedly but let's just run through obviously um, Rihanna was a, definitely a standout there was an owed i think to tupac in terms of the beanie on top of her head and some other notable bits of inspiration but let's just continue we've got kim kardashian in the fully blacked um burka trying to tribute from balenciaga which looked fairly stunning in terms of look wise but again wasn't necessarily something you would attribute to american fashion you have little nods x just being excessive and extra and just trying to court attention but again nothing that relates to america at all whatsoever but hey we continue we've got um billy eilish who i thought um looked incredible she's really a chameleon and billy eilish in terms of how she looks like she can kind of look completely different based on her hair and makeup or basically the clothes that she's wearing um i thought this was a really cool tribute maybe to marilyn monroe maybe i'm wrong i'm not really too sure or maybe just people of that era or around that ilk i thought this is a fairly decent look especially when you see how long that trail is going it's flipping epic to look at megan the stallion we can pass not much going on there people are taking the piss out of Megan Stallion's feet a bit about how they're all crumpled up but I guess that's more so a evidence of her doing sports when she was younger it even looks like she my theory number one she either was like myself when she was younger she had really big feet for her age like I think when I was in year nine I already had a size nine and for whatever reason they didn't grow any bigger than that which I'm happy no they didn't grow any they didn't grow much bigger than that I think I'm a size 10 now basically UK so I grew like one size one full size after that and that was about and it stopped but I remember that age being small and having size nine feet you actually you legitimately felt like you had flippers on your feet so with that being said I was always kind of wear shoes that were one size or some Sometimes a half one size and a half two size two size 
yeah anywhere between a half a size to one size to two size smaller than my actual feet which led to my feet being really crumbled and having bunions and whatnot and then of course further down the line i ended up playing a lot of football playing sunday league level football all the time and you're wearing studs and whatever and people are stepping on your toes and fucking them up and you're just in the cold and you just get mash up so my feet don't look the greatest you know so that could be a consequence of it but in general i, I don't really get the point what she meant to do cover them of course not jennifer lopez yeah we can keep missing on that one um what's her name is it lupita right yes yeah, so lupita this is a really good american fashion outfit i thought a whole denim dress kind of giving you a um, nod to the memor the memorable um britney spears and justin timberlake um denim outfit that they wore one time um lord again not very american fashion that woman not very this is a one that everyone was getting their panties in test about um alexandria alexandra casio cortez wore this stupid tack the wrist dress tax the rich dress at the met gala which is beyond parody because you have to pay was it thirty five thousand dollars per ticket to go in it's you're surrounded by again the top one percent of the one percent um the fact that they are they're not wearing a mask and legitimately all the help behind them that are assisting have to wear a face mask um the fact that everybody in the room is rich is like a picture to the cry it's just a completely tone deaf and stupid outfit at least a bum looks good in it though we continue Nah, 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 nah. You know, Kendall Jenner in, in Givenchy looks fairly nice. Um, probably the best bit of Givenchy that I've seen from Matthew Williams in terms of head to toe look. It looks really incredible. To be fair, Frank Hunter made a rare appearance again. Not much to do in American fashion. Some people are saying that it was him being what was it? Um, it was kind of a meta narrative, less so about his outfit and more so about him being there with this kind of um flip on the DreamWorks logo on his hat. There's something attached to it, but again, I'm not getting involved in that stuff. When it comes to Frank Ocean fans, they will just, you know, use any bit of rationale to explain whatever greatness that they think he has. Um, Camila Cabello and Sean Mendes again. Loads of trashy outfits again. Let's just go through. There's too many shit. I don't want to go through the entire ones because it's flipping boring to see. But yeah, a lot of shit ones. There's a good... Um, Dan Levy um, from Shit's Creek look terrible. I think this is meant to be Lueve. Yeah, it is. Um, Dan Levy is illustrative proof that, you know, some people are like, oh, men, some men only look good in beards, right? Beards are like, what did they say? Beards are like male makeup, right? You would, I would assume some men also have the problem with glasses, where glasses are a form of makeup because Dan Levy without the glasses doesn't look great right he looks really handsome when he's got the glasses and he's got the kind of you know piggy blinders hair going on wafting around he's wearing his rick owens bomber and his shorts and shit right he looks sick that way this way he doesn't really look that great personally i don't think so maybe glasses can be added to that um arsenal of stuff if like if men take that off their face they don't end up looking as cute as they would do prior um you've got the two sisters there you've got casey musgroves with the yams out Timothy Chamelet looked pretty shit. I thought um, Haida Aikman designed outfit. Well, no, it's, it was a tribute, right? It was Haida. What is it? Uh, Rick Owens top. Haida Aikman's blouser. So it's a Rick Owens top. I guess it's underneath. It looks more like a Haida Aikman outfit. It doesn't really look like a Rick Owens outfit at all. Maybe the pants do. Um, stuff that, you know, wearing a pair of Converse's. Obviously, that's a tribute. And the head not to the American fashion, but. I hate how he stands with his hand like that on his on his wrist. He again looks like somebody that says bro too much when you meet him. Um I don't like the outfit. I think it's horrible. He's too pale maybe to wear that much white in my opinion. But hey, we move. Uh da -da 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 -da. Again, the irony isn't lost on me that I'm commenting on these people's outfits and I've got a one pound um what you call it earth wind and fire t-shirt that i bought from a charity shop on me i know that i know that um you got asap rocky um i forgot what the brand is it's an american brand again that was a fairly decent tribute um simon biles yeah decent stuff you know sierra probably looked pretty cool maybe a tribute to her fella i'm not really too sure there dev hines looked pretty dapper i like his dms there but yeah you know fairly 
fairly whatever again it's just interesting and funny to see that all these people you know celebrating having a good time and then all the bits of help behind them are having to put on the mask so it's like you know the servants who are basically making these guys lives that much better and basically getting their every wants and needs and desires are there with the mask you know having to protect themselves but the ones that are actually starving in this thing can go in and do whatever the hell they want it's just a funny dynamic and also it's just funny just considering the levels of wealth that's already in this place right and the fact that the world is on fire people are in crippling debt people have lost jobs family members struggling to pay the rent struggling to stay alive bloody hell man tiana taylor i guess if you had a body like that too you'd keep you'd lose shoulders of skin but again isn't there a moment to just you know switch it up a little bit if she isn't in lace she's just sharing bare flesh and i guess in this setting considering it's again celebration of american fashion it just looks a bit weird isn't it but hey we continue yeah it is it is what it is isn't it let's just let's just kind of ended there i think maybe in terms of it but yeah met gala happened loads of crazy outfits people getting pissed off about stuff they probably shouldn't get pissed off about rihanna obviously stepped out and looked amazing and apart from that it is what it is isn't it it is what it is what else i think that might be it you know yes ended there because i already spoke about loads of other bullshit stuff let's leave it right there so it's jackson single show episode number 497 thanks so much for tuning in it's been a pleasure to have your company if it's your first time tuning into the show on youtube please make sure you smash the like hit subscribe and comment down below if you listen to the podcast app please leave a five star review and share the show with your friends and of course support via patreon welcome to you can find the link in the description of the show whether it's on youtube whether it's on the podcast app it's at patreon.com for just agostino subscribe get involved on there i really love your support um, it's only one dollar one pound per month you guys just all my bonus content don't delay get involved in it today until next time my friends i'll see you very very soon take care be safe peace